Hello there, thank you for joining me again today. Um, this is a, a very short video on the uh, Marconi um, Instruments microwave frequency counter. Uh, this is a model 2442. Um, there were different models in the range, all went to different frequency ranges. This goes to 26.5 gigahertz uh, microwave frequency counter. Uh, we've got inputs A, B and C on the front, a power switch and standby. Um, all the frequency entry keys and modes and operation done from the keypad here. At the moment we're just generating a, a 600 megahertz signal into the um, into the unit um, and we have um, obviously a nine digit frequency readout on the display. It's quite an accurate instrument, very very uh, accurate. It has a very high stability uh, crystal oscillator oven inside. Um, there are lots of features on this that we can uh, we can perform. Uh, one of which is an offset, um, so we can set up say an offset frequency of 600 megahertz, and then set that, and then it'll tell us uh, what free how far off we are in frequency. Um, so, for example, if I just generate a a microwave frequency let's get it up to like one gigahertz set the frequency on the sig gen to one gigahertz um, which is a thousand megahertz so that's what it's displaying here uh, if I were to set the offset uh, to one one two three megahertz then that will display how far off frequency we are um, the difference between the source and what the microwave counters reading obviously um, you know if we're measuring an oscillator or or some kind of transmitter and we want to uh, measure its frequency accuracy we can do that there so for example if my transmitter starts to wander off frequency uh, which I'm doing now I get it to wander off frequency it's wandered off by quite a bit there I'm down to 800 megahertz 940 megahertz um, now we're at a thousand and ten megahertz so you can see there that it uh, it'll display you know the frequency offset depending on how far you take it off frequency um, so if I just adjust it very slightly for example so in the hundreds of hertz so we've moved 140 megahertz of frequency now and then for example that would be um, 20 megahertz of frequency in a moment so that's displaying 20,000 kilohertz obviously there's a thousand kilohertz to a megahertz so 20,000 kilohertz is 20 megahertz so we're reading the kilohertz range for accuracy at the moment and there's a number of uh, measurements that you can perform here or you can just go back to um, if you like just standard frequency readout uh, which is what we're doing there we're reading a thousand and twenty megahertz and uh, you can select the resolution so full F is fastest frequency measurement and the, the uh, technical manager is just directing me here on how to uh, deal with these technical problems and then we're down to a slower resolution and then obviously back up to uh, the fastest resolution so that's the fastest that the instrument will do and uh, yeah so it's quite a comprehensive little unit um, you can do quite a bit with it um, although it does read higher than 26.5 gigahertz so if I set a frequency say for example of 10 gigahertz here so that's 10 gigahertz and uh, and then if I set uh, let's see now make it 11 gigahertz reads that quite nicely say we'll put 20 gigahertz in so now we're at 20 gigahertz 
we're injecting a signal level of 0 dBm in. Um, if I select 26 gigahertz, so we're now reading 26 gigahertz, and if I can put 27 gigahertz in, it's reading that, so we're already above 26.5 gigahertz range. Let's have a look at 28 gigahertz, reads that. Uh, 29 gigahertz, still reading it. Uh, 30 gigahertz, read that as well. Let's try 31 gigahertz. So it won't read 31 gigahertz at that level, but if we set the output level to 5 dBm, so it's a higher output level, we'll see if it reads it. No, it's not doing so. Uh, just out of matter of interest, just try 32 gigahertz. Yep, so it's reading 32 gigahertz. Let's just have a look at 31 gigahertz again. So it's not reading 30 gigahertz and 31, but it'll read uh, 32 gigahertz. Let's have a look at uh, 33 gigahertz. Yep, yeah. uh, 34 gigahertz. Yeah, it's reading 34 gigahertz. Let's try 35 gigahertz. Yeah, still doing okay. It's a bit tricky at 35 gigahertz. You can see it's sort of dropping in and out every now and then. Um, obviously, this cable that we're using is only certified to 18 gigahertz, so it's as leaky as hell at this frequency at 18 gigahertz and above. It starts to get very leaky. So we're doing quite well at 35 gigahertz there, I think. Um, we'll set the frequency to uh, 36 gigahertz. And what we'll do, we'll just increase the output level up to 8 dBm. Just to see whether it uh, overcomes the losses in the cable. But uh, it doesn't appear to be... Uh, we'll just try 40 gigahertz spot frequency just to see whether that resolves it. But no, it doesn't. But at least we can, you know, get about 33 gigahertz out of it quite easily. Um, which is pretty good. So it's still usable at uh, obviously different RF levels. Obviously if we set the frequency, say, to 20 gigahertz. And then uh, we reduce the level, I think, neg 40 dBm. Is the lowest it'll take um, at those frequencies round about that. I mean obviously the cable is very attenuating at, uh, at that frequency. Um, so I'll try minus 20 dBm. So minus 20 dBm at 20 gigahertz it's quite sensitive and it will pick up uh, you know the 20 gigahertz frequency. Um, if, again, if we wanted to uh, look at some of the other features, there's a low pass filter feature on it uh, where you can select a low pass filter as well um, to get rid of interference. Uh, we've obviously got different resolutions, uh, bandwidth. Um, so it's overflowing at the moment because it's such a high frequency, you know. So that's uh, obviously in 10 kilohertz resolution. Um, that's in uh, 1 kilohertz resolution at 20 gigahertz. So it's quite a comprehensive little frequency counter. And uh, as I say, quite useful. It's just a shame that the display isn't backlit. That's the only problem with these instruments from Marconi, a lot of them aren't backlit and uh, can make it difficult to see them in, in, you know, in bright conditions. Um, so we've been through the offset frequency capability, low pass filter, uh, we've got a local mode for uh, GPIB and uh, general purpose interface bus, we can reset the counter, um, you know if it gets stuck anywhere, we've got different resolutions and we've obviously got the display um, rate adjustments as well. So the F is the fastest and uh, that's the fastest gate time. 
Uh, we can select different inputs as well, A and B, for these lower frequency inputs. And obviously um, number C, which is obviously um, C port for the microwave um, type adjustments. So on the rear of a unit, if I just turn it round, I'll just disconnect this uh, if I can. It's quite tight. And then I'll turn it round. So that's the kind of port that we've got on the um, front. Again, always observe the damage level. Never connect these directly to transmitters. Always via sniffers or uh, some kind of um, coupler, resistive coupler. Never, never directly transmit into, um, you know, a frequency count. Otherwise, you'll blow it. Especially if you're transmitting high amounts of RF power over a watt. Um, so on the rear of the unit, um, we have a few little um, things. We've got um, the frequency standard where we can set it between um, 10 megahertz or 1 megahertz. We've also got an in and an output port there, so you can run other test instruments from this. We've all got, got the fuses to protect it, and then we've got the... Um, GPIB uh, connector again. Um, you'll also notice that there's a trigger input and a sweep uh, inhibit output. Um, so these outputs can be used for when we're making measurements with sweep generators and oscillators and we're measuring performances of RF systems. Um, so that's a rundown of the back. Obviously we've got a fan. It's quite a quiet instrument to run. Um, some instruments are very noisy when they're running. This is uh, quite a nice little little instrument. So there's quite a bit of capability on this. Um, obviously, um, there's lots of functions that you can you can use with it. But it's um, it's like anything else. A nice little instrument to have in the workshop. Um, quite a a useful piece of equipment especially that going up to microwave frequencies great for calibrating oscillators and such like and um, and again one of these things that uh, would really help aid in fault finding uh, in particular um, obviously you know these pieces of equipment when they were purchased brand new were very expensive um, but there's plenty of information about these on the internet service manuals, uh, there's even the EEPROM images for different versions of EEPROM that are on them. Um, so if you get the opportunity to get one of these I fully recommend it. Um, very nice piece of equipment, something that will be very useful in the workshop. Uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, if you like it and want to see more of these please subscribe. Obviously I'll come up with more videos where we're doing measurements with this type of equipment and the uh, the type of um, capability to be used in in maintenance and repair or design uh, function so thank you very much for watching uh, catch up with your next video